Welcome to module four, data validation. Now, this is one of my favorite things to do inside of a spreadsheet. This is where you've got a little thing that you click in the cell, like a pill shaped thing, or maybe just a down arrow. And when you click it, a drop down list appears, and then you can select one of those values. Well, we're going to show you how to put that in our spreadsheet. And this is going to make this a lot more functional. We're going to practically use this for the categories and payment methods. We've got these over here. It's one of the first things we created, but we haven't done anything with them yet. Well, we're about to. We're going to pull them over here into our budget table. There are a few different ways to create data validation dropdown lists. The first and the classic way is in the data menu. Select data validation, and this is going to pop up some data validation rules here. When we click add rule, it's going to add a rule. And actually, I'm going to bring it over here and add a rule to M2 first before I show you the table options. If you're in just in a regular range outside of one of our created tables, then it's going to say, hey, apply to range. And we can say we can modify this. It's just showing the one where we were highlighting. We're going to say M2 to M5. We have criteria from a bunch of different choices. And we're going to say drop down. And then we're going to, you know, if we want to select colors for these options, we got option one and two. We've got some advanced options we may look at later, but for now, let's click done. Now, this will allow us to select option one or option two in any one of these cells. Furthermore, option three, if I do that, then it's going to say, hey, you can't do that. We have data validation here. Uh, you have to select option one or two. And let me just show you how you can change that. Let's let's do look at advanced options. So if we open advanced options, we can say show help text. Select an option, please. We can say if the data is invalid, reject it, which is what we just did. We rejected that value. And then we can say display type and it defaults to chips ever since Google added chips. But you can easily change that to just an arrow where the whole cell is shaded or plain text, where you can even tell that it is a dropped out list. I'll leave it with chip, I'll click done. And let's try typing option three again. And now it's actually got a custom message where it says select an option, please. That's where we hit that custom message, select an option, please, for the help text. Okay, that's fine and dandy. That is in a regular cell. Well, what's the difference about tables? Well, in tables, it's going to apply all the way down automatically. There's also a couple other ways you can actually access it. You can go to the drop down menu here if you right click a cell in here, or we can go up to the top of the table. And this is how we change the column type. And drop down is actually a column type for our table, as well as smart chips, but that's a different topic altogether that looks similar. Let's click drop down. And it's going to take us over here to that data validation rule. Let me remove my face so you can see everything. I probably blocked stuff a minute ago. We can apply to column. However, you see how this is grayed out up here? That's because we're in a table. It's simply automatically applying this to the entire category column. And it's stopping at the bottom of our table. So down here, it doesn't do anything on row 102. The criteria, we still have option one and option two, that's fine. And we can do advanced options, all that remains the same. But as you can see here, inside of this table, we have less criteria options, we're basically just able to define these values, or get them from a range. And the range is what we want. So we want to get the criteria here from a range from our categories range, right? So that needs to come from over here. And we need both the income accounts and expense accounts. So I'm going to click this, and I'm going to select all of these, and then click OK. And now look at that. Here in our data validation rules, we have all of these different categories that are available to us for our budget sheet. Now we can go in and change the little color coded things. I'm not going to do that right now. We can change the advanced options. I'm not going to do that right now either. As you can see inside of a table, we also don't have that custom help text. We just have those few regular options. So we could select paycheck, auto, etc. And now we can categorize our transactions. Test, 
if we test something here in a table, it's automatically going to give us a warning. So it's going to allow the value to remain here, but it's going to say, hey, eh, something's wrong. It's going to flag it. Uh, let's change that to kids. And that's how we enter data validation inside of our table. Okay, let's do the same thing with our payment methods column. Let's select drop down after right clicking one of the cells here. It's going to pop up this same validation rule. We want to drop down from a range. We want to select that range from our categories table. And let me show you another way to do this. Because this categories table is a table, we can actually enter categories or equal categories bracket payment methods, which is the name of the column C that we want. And that's going to pull in all of our options in payment methods. And it will add another card. It will add cards, not in real time in this menu, but if I go back here to the budget where I've put the drop down list, it will add anything that I add to that payment methods table column over here into our payment methods column of the budget that we're using. The reason you might want to use this table reference instead of just selecting a set list of cells is if we ever for some reason had even more payment methods down here all the way to yet another card and extended that table down past the original range, well, that's no problem because we're dynamically still selecting that inside of our drop down validation rules. So there it is, yet another card still in there. Okay, now in the next video, we're going to start piecing these things together using conditional statements to make the budget actually do what a budget is supposed to do. So if I got a paycheck, I don't need to subtract that to my balance. I need to add it to it and so forth.